Hello there. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? I'm good. How about you? Okay, good. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Julie, can you see my screen? I can. Hi, Susan. Hi, how are you? I'm well today. How are you? I'm okay. Good. Who's the armchair? <laughs> That's funny. That's like uh, in Harry Potter. I've been working on getting a coworker to join. Oh, I think cool. I've almost got her. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> next week or the week after I might get her to join. <laughs> yeah, December is really hard. People are just so overloaded with the end of the school year and all the end of the year concerts and um, Christmas and you know their regular working job and anything else that's extra. It's just, it's a rough month. Yeah, and she's uh, going to college on her own time. So she had finals. I don't gotcha. know if they're done yet. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably finishing up this week, actually. She's doing finals. <clears throat> By the way, uh, not to get ahead, but what's next week's topic? So I can put it in my calendar. <laughs> I, I wanted to do communication, if that's okay with all y'all. Communication, okay. Is that finished. good? Yeah. Because I am the type, I'm the planner type that writes everything down. Uh, uh, that's great. That's great. Okay, um, so we'll just get started with the four of us. As we know, we, we typically have people join in throughout the hour. So I'll just get started. Uh, today, we're gonna to be talking about the arranger how many of you have ever worked with an arranger? Have Do you guys know if you've worked with an arranger off the top of your heads? I know people who say they are. Uh -huh. I, I've worked with a couple of arrangers. So um, a lot of the material in here today will be because of my own experience of working with them. And I have a really good friend who helped me with some of the material today who's also an arranger. Um, so arrangers are, I would say, less frequent um, than most of the other strengths. You know, you, when you get into achiever, learner, relater, um, they are, you know, 30% of the population has those in their top five strengths, where a ranger is only found 13% of the time in a person's top five strengths. So it's a little bit more rare. And um, you'll see a purple theme throughout today's presentation because it is an executing strength, very, very strong execution strength. And um, if you have a strength in the execution arena, it just means that you're really good at doing things. You're really good at executing. And um, in this case, the um, arranger is really good at organization. So they fall into the organization category of the work zones. And what you're going to see them doing is arranging and aligning and then realigning and reorganizing and rearranging. Okay. Those numbers didn't match. <laughs> I think there should be 13 back here. I'm going to change that. I'm like, what was that 10%? Change 10% to 13. Okay. Um, so here's some of the traits. Arrangers flexibly organize. They determine how all of the pieces and resources can be arranged for maximum productivity. They really, really enjoy 
um, understanding all the pieces of parts and pieces, and they can handle that. They handle knowing all the different things going on and all the moving parts and pieces really, really well. Their motto is there is always a better way. What they like to do is, you know, arrange and rearrange all those moving parts and pieces because they like to come up with efficiencies. And then they, they you know, the minute they, they see an efficiency, they go, oh, now there's another one and they can see a better way of doing it. So they just really like to improve, improve, improve to achieve maximum um, productivity with both people and processes. They're very good at sensing which people have what talents and getting those people in the right places to um, do the work successfully, which makes me, you know, really believe that they should also be in the management work zone up here in, in, in number six. Um, so I believe they kind of split that number five and six zone with not only organization, which is their primary function, but also managing people. Okay. They're really good at um, event arrangement and management. They're good at orchestrating a lot of different moving parts and pieces within those large events that, that need to happen. They make awesome program managers. And um, you know, when, when something unexpected occurs, they're extremely flexible. You know, so they organize things, but they're not so structured and set on the organization or structure that they can't change. They easily change. They easily flex and they easily, you know, rearrange and move things around so that it is again efficient. You you can kind of see these um, identify these people because they usually have multiple jobs. They actually can't stay interested or engaged unless they have multiple things going on all at once. Julia Ranger is your fifth. So does this seem does this seem accurate to you, Julie? Like some of the things I just said in this slide? Uh, spot on. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. Sorry, I'm just taking some notes for myself as I think of more things. Okay. Um so a ranger can be intensive, intensified a lot of the time. Let's just put it that way. If a ranger is with something like achiever and responsibility, where now you're not just arranging, 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 rearranging, but you're also achieving arrangements or feeling really ultimately responsible for those arrangements, really, really intense personalities. Um, and and not intense in a belligerent way, but intense in the, in, in the ability to arrange. Um, if, they're, if a ranger is also paired with adaptability, they're very, very flexible. They're, the, the, the part of their personality that is flexible becomes extremely uh, flexible. And if they're paired with a process improvement or continuous improvement function like consistency, discipline, focus, or learner, that also intensifies the strength. And I should have put on here, I will add it, that a ranger gets intensified with organizational strength. So like relator, or consistency um, are also going to intensify it with, with the organizational piece, okay? I guess I did put that here. I just missed relator. So I'll add relator up here, which is an organizational strength. And then arrangers when paired with individualization or maximizer, which are both people and talent type strengths, um, that part of their pers personality gets accentuated when they really see you know, where people are good, where they're talented, where they should be placed to be most effective and most productive. Do any of you have these combinations? I do. I've got responsibility as my fourth and relator as my third. Wow. So then you're kind of like an intense arranger on, because you said arranger's your number six? Uh, five. Oh, five. Oh, wow. Okay, so three, four, and five. So you're intensified on just the ability to arrange because of the responsibility. And then you're also highly, highly organized and can see mm -hmm. organizational structures because of your arranger and relator. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. Okay, great. Um, and then what we see is that arranger and responsibility are paired together a lot, 40% of the time. So if you have a ranger, you have responsibility lingering somewhere nearby. But what you rarely see is a ranger paired with command. 
uh, arrangers do not need to be commanded. They, they are self-sufficient. They, um, you know, especially when paired with responsibility 40% of the time, they're just very autonomous type personalities. Um, so uh, don't, don't are, you know, those two strengths aren't, aren't like each other. They're not paired together very frequently, but also um, there could be some conflict between the rangers and commanders. If a commander is trying to command an arranger and a ranger is like, look, I got this. I don't, I don't need to be commanded. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm looking at the chat because I'm trying to figure out Mr. Armchair. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Now I know who you are. A ranger learner. Got it. Okay. Um, so when uh, a ranger is existing in the world and they run into a strategic person, those two people typically get along and it's because they share what if thinking. What if this, what if that, what if this, what if that. Arrangers also get, around, get along with high responsibility. One, because a lot of times they do have responsibility lingering by um, but also because there's just a mutual respect between the two because they both handle a lot. They both take on a lot, uh, which you can imagine if you have both responsibility and ranger, you're taking on a lot, you know, just, just a tremendous amount uh, every single day that you're handling. And then if an arranger is a paired, uh, paired up with, in, um, I'm sorry, if an, not paired, but if an arranger is partnered with an individualizer, they usually get along really well as well because Again, they're, they're really looking for where to put talent to make the operation most productive. So the personalities that an arranger could butt heads with, right? This isn't necessarily the case, but it could, um, is when one arranger is trying to arrange something, another arranger is trying to arrange something and they're both trying to arrange it and realign it in different ways. And they're just not, they're not, they're not aligning. That could be conflict. We've talked about the command. Um, also, an arranger is so flexibly organized and they're changing so much that they could disrupt um, the flow of a consistency, discipline, or focus personality, which is a little bit more structured. Um, consistency are obviously consistent and discipline, you know, have these longer term systems that they put in place. And focus is all about, you know, staying focused on the goal without getting distracted by anything else. And so it gets rid of all those distractions or just beelines towards the goals. So you could see you could see points of conflict between all of these types of personalities. Okay, um, they are not at their best when they only have one or two things to focus on. That is just awful. It's the most demotivating thing to them on the planet. They literally need fifteen to twenty-five things to juggle all at once to stay motivated and engaged. Okay, they really hate like static, routine, repetitive tasks. That's really boring to them. Um, they want to optimize productivity. So if they're not getting to do that, if they're not getting to arrange or configure things in the best arrangements, that's frustrating. Um, if they're not getting to do the talent piece, you know, they feel a little, a little part of their personality missing. Okay, they're really good at organizing events. So if they're not getting to organize events, especially large events, um, that could feel a little empty to them as well. And they're really receptive to change and different perspectives. So if they're not getting different perspectives or changes going on, then they're bored. Um, and, and, and if they're working in a, an environment where they don't get to create those efficiencies that they're really natural at creating, then they also could get very frustrated with this. Randy, I can share that if I only have the one or two things to do, my productivity level goes down. I, I don't yeah. know what to do if I only have one or two things to do. So I do nothing. Yeah. I ignore my plate. I get going again. Yeah, because you can only hit those two things so much. I mean, it's like, okay, I, I, I've just yep. hit those. I don't need to hit them again for another day or so. Yeah. Yeah, it completely mm -hmm. makes sense. You guys excel when you're in an environments where you do get to juggle you know, and where it's really dynamic and really complex. And there's a lot of things going on. And there's lots of projects and lots of initiatives. Um, That's why yeah. work from home doesn't work very well for me. <laughs> yeah, because you're all by yourself and you're not getting to engage and interact with loads of people and things and projects. Yeah. Yeah, you mm -hmm. need a lot of stimulation. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I could see like, you know, um, you know, like in a factory even or something, right. Where there's just a bunch of moving parts and pieces that you got to um, maintain across the entire operation to keep the factory up and running that that would be like an interesting scenario for an arranger and I did something like that did you what'd you do I was on the uh, warehouse side of the Kimberly Clark paper mill and I had 74 clip operators I think there's 55 truck bays and it was a 24 7 365 operation yeah, and that's why I put logistics on the last bullet point here, because I just really feel like a logistics environment is fantastic for an arranger. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what else is on here that's interesting about environments that you guys like? Kind of hit on most of these already. I do think it's cool that when, you know, there are changes and there's things that are abrupt or things that come up, you guys just immediately devise a new option, devise a new plan, you know, hunt down um, the path of least resistance or form a new partnership. Like you really move forward to say, okay, look, like this didn't work or this isn't working. So let's just immediately take action or execute upon that to, to make a change to see if something else can work better. So the things you love to hear are things like, oh, you're so flexible, you're so adaptable, you're so organized, which is kind of a, you know, to hear those two things in one sentence is kind of an oxymoron, right? You're organized, but you're also flexible <laughs> and adaptable. Um, you know, people should be complimenting you on, on being able to handle so much and juggling so many things at one time. Um, you know, they should be seeing that you are putting people in the right places and getting talent, you know, aligned and organized in a way that's really effective for the organization. They should see your efficiencies and the efficiencies that you're bringing to an organization or even to the home. Um, they should see that productivity is increased around you and that you drive a lean operation, you know, driving down expenses. Um, they should be saying, oh, wow, you know, you, you organized this large event and you did it so well. Everybody was, you know, you know it was streamlined and it was seamless. Oh, one, one feedback I got from someone was they said that I, they loved being called restless in a good way, right? Like you're restless in a good way. You just, you just go and you just get things going. Um, some of the things that you guys have probably heard if you are an arranger that you did not enjoy hearing was you lack structure or you're too flexible, which again is that oxymoron. It just depends on what the perception of the other person is. Um, they might think that you're, you know, bending to every whim instead of staying on track, or they might think that you have a disregard for rules or procedures as you, you know, choose a different system or improve the process. Um, you know, they might think that you're constantly changing priorities in your mind, where I know that isn't true for you guys. You guys don't change priority. You just change the how, the way that you're getting to the priority. Um, and they might think that you're constantly changing your mind of what you need. I know I worked for a manager who was an arranger and at first it was very overwhelming because I'm the opposite. I'm disciplined consistency. And, you know, I just felt like every time I get in the room with this man, he would change what we were doing and change the process and change the spreadsheet and just, you know, always be asking for different things and always be, he was actually an arranger achiever. So he's always asking for more. And I was just like, I haven't even achieved the first 10 things you gave me, let alone these next you know, 30 things. And I just realized he just needed to get it off his chest and put it in a queue somewhere. Didn't expect me to necessarily get it all done right there in that moment. So then it was easier to just like, okay, let me just get you know number one done and number two done and then number three. And just, but we just have this long log of things that need to be done over time. And then also just by waiting a little bit, we could see which ones kind of fell off and weren't necessarily as important. And, the, and then the ones that were more important kept getting repeated. So it was like, okay, these are the more important ones. Um, you might hear you know, that you don't see the big picture, that you keep moving things around. Maybe you make people nervous, right? They say your process is messy or nervous and then nervous because I don't know if you're actually gonna get all these things done. Um, it's difficult to keep up with you. You're all over the place. 
uh, your, your decisions lack priority and your methods are exhausting. I'm sure you guys have heard that, that <laughs> you exhaust everybody around you. You guys just do so much. It's crazy how much you can do and you, how much you do it simultaneously, you know, and keep track of all those different things. Any other ones you want to throw out there that you've enjoyed hearing? No? Okay. No, I don't, I don't think I was, I've been called many of those things, but it's probably because I'm tempered with a, a couple other areas. Like and, strategic, yeah. yeah. And just, just for giggles, I, I will share, I did organize a training and development conference for 600 people in the 80s so wow <laughs> I know. i've done the big sure it went thing really really well I, I it did it was the best one ever <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you guys are just built for that kind of stuff um you guys like to be known for the large volume of things that you can handle your flexibility you know the fact that you do organize and you organize well your efficiencies the fact that you eliminate waste and run that lean operation for your um for being efficient yourself and uh, being able, you know, you like to, you like people to use what you build. That that was something that I, I learned during this process of putting these slides together is that arrangers really want you to use their stuff. That's one of the biggest compliments you can give them. Um, they want to make someone's life easier by the processes and organization they put in place. Um, they want to be known for the time that they've saved uh, the organization or people. And they want to be known for getting the operation to run really efficiently. They like to be known for scaling things at a very large scale for others, for uh, being able to be flexible and shift directions quickly and constantly improving the, the organization and operation. They want to be known for their execution and obviously for, you know, arranging and orchestrating large events. And they want to be known to be useful to people. So when they communicate, they do listen. Um, and as they listen, they may be drawn to reconfigure your life. <laughs> so um, it's okay. You just need to listen to their suggestions because they're trying to help you and help make you more efficient and optimize your productivity. Um, they will always offer a better way of doing things and make suggestions around how you can use a process, a methodology, a configuration, a technique. And they're going to be looking for those things in the conversation that they can contribute to in that way. They're very, very productive and they're very productive focused. So they don't want to have a conversation that's not productive. They also could come off as distracted because they've got a zillion other things going on. Um, I've been with arrangers when they have a lot going on and I cannot believe how they can stay focused in the conversation when they have these five other things around them going on, but they do because I'm distracted by all the five things going on, but they're not. They just, they're able to keep everything up and hold it up while still you know, having a conversation with you. Um, yeah, so they're gonna love to talk about optimization, productivity, talent, where to put people. Um, you know, where to place people in the best roles so they can do the best job. Uh, they may get bored if the conversation goes on too long. It just depends on their other strengths as well. And if their other strengths are engaged or not. Um, so if we're communicating with an arranger, you know, we wanna listen and take interest in, in the topics that they're talking about, which are going to be around efficiency, optimization, productivity. Okay. And um, we don't want to go off and complain to them or talk drama to them. They're very logical. They're very practical. They're very present. And they just want to talk about the tangible. What can we do to make it better? What, you know, what can we not do? Let's just, let's just, you know, resolve and fix the, the situation. Um, if you are going to address 10 or 15, 20 topics with them, they're going to feel obligated to touch on all of them. So if you ask a lot of questions, just be prepared for lots of answers back. 
They're going to want to discuss how to manage the day to day. They're going to talk about ways to improve being efficient at various things. They, they, they love being efficient in relationships and tasks and operation and organization and um, just, uh, just about everything. It's all about productivity. They're very change savvy, so they'll be willing to discuss changes. They'll be willing to try changes. I think it's great to bring up to them, you know, what partnerships might be most effective or efficient for them. They'll be interested in that. Um, whenever I talk to rangers, I love it because they're just, they're easy to, for me, I, I give a lot of, um, as a coach, obviously I give a lot of, here's what, here's some suggestions of things you could do that might make you better or more productive. Um, and they, they take them very well. So they love talking about that type of stuff. They're gonna wanna talk about events different approaches, different perspectives. These are some questions you can ask them. You know, why did you arrange it in that way? How could this be more efficient? How could we make this better? What would make this more practical or usable? Who is um, best to do this job over here or this job over here? What's a more effective way of doing this? Can you please organize this? How would you organize it? How did you organize it? Can you please organize this? <laughs> oh, I have it on there twice. Um, you know, what's a better arrangement? Asking them to orchestrate events is really effective use of their time. Um, asking them what the best alignments are and what would make things more efficient. Okay. If you are an arranger who is also a salesperson, which by the way, we're always salespeople at some point in our life. Um, here are just some suggestions on, on using your talents in order to influence others. You know, finding the paths of least resistance is really smart as a salesperson because you don't want to go after the hard sales. Like it's, it's a waste of time. Um, you want to be available to respond to the last minute requests of your clients because you handle them well. You want to share step-by-step -step procedures of what people need to do. You guys are really good at creating those manuals and creating the step-by-steps and creating that organization for others to be really efficient and effective. And of course, during the conversations, you can be you know, really flexible and, and navigate the conversation as needed and move along with the conversation. Okay, you wanna talk about how that product or service saves someone money, provides them a better way of doing things, um, increases their ability to be organized or, or even centralized um, or, or um, how that product or service optimizes productivity. Maybe you want to, you know, discuss how the product or service helps get the people in the right place and gets alignment or how the product and service reduces waste. You could come up with new partnership opportunities or options for the client, and, they, and that would allow them to know that they can come to you for those things. Um, since you're good listeners, you can you can listen as well and really get the you know feedback from the other people of what their needs are, and um, you, you know don't be afraid to ask lots of questions because again, your brain goes all these moving parts and pieces, puts them all together to see how they're all aligned really naturally. Definitely as a salesperson, you want to run a regulars pipeline. I mean, you, you're going to want to have a hundred touch points so that you can, you know, go to all those clients. And, um, I worked with an arranger salesperson. She was amazing. I couldn't believe she was the top salesperson, you know, because she could just handle so many more clients effortlessly than, than most people could handle. Okay. Maybe you have an event, uh, product or service, you know, you want to talk about how the product or service is going to help them host large events seamlessly. And then of course, discussing changes since you guys are really adept at change. Now, if I'm trying to influence you, I'm going to just flip it, right? I'm obviously going to show you how the product or service makes you more organized, efficient, productive, flexible, shows you how to get talent in the right places, um, allows you to be more responsive or available or maybe it saves you time or reduces waste or saves you money. Um, maybe the, the, the product or tool is going to, you know, enable you to have more partnerships or touch more clients. Okay. 
And if you're trying to sell yourself, here are some ideas for you. You know, you can quantify and speak to your efficiencies. You can share with others how you optimize talent and streamline processes. You can offer um, your organizational services to sell your abilities. Sometimes us execution people actually need to do the work for people to show them how well we do the work and that sells, sells our services. We need to find ways to demonstrate better ways of doing things and showing how you know, different configurations can optimize productivity. We can provide examples of when our flexibility really benefited um, the teams that we were a part of. We could talk about our uh, receptivity to change uh, and, and really describe a story around, look, change is painful, but this is you know, what came out of it on the other end. Obviously, just like Julie did today, she just told us about this large event of 600 people that she uh, that she ran and orchestrated that went very successfully. It's a great example of, of something that she did well that could sell herself. I mean, she sold me. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you. And then, you know, you could explain how you're motivated and, and the fact that you are motivated when you're juggling more rather than less. That's important for you guys to put out there up front so that people understand how you work. Obviously, you can share instances where you devise new options, approaches, or partnerships. And giving, you know, great examples of how you do get people to work together productively. So we might want to, you know, observe, does this person have a lot on their plate? Do they, you know, um, feel, do, do I feel overwhelmed by the amount that they're dealing with? If I feel overwhelmed as an achiever with the amount they're dealing with, they're probably an arranger. Um, you know, do they seem orderly, but they, do they also seem flexible? We listen for the words that they use. They're going to use the words orchestrate, conduct, arrange, efficiency, options, talent, arrangements, execute, synchronize, streamline, synergy, rhythm, order, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And these are the words that we want to use when we're speaking with them to get their brain engaged. Okay, so here's some considerations I put out there for y'all. Um, don't fear messes, okay? Messes show you what's not working. So just let it be a mess for a minute because you're, you're going to see what, um, what's wrong. And then you're going to be able to fix the mess, arrange it, and organize. Since you rarely rest due to feeling like you need to constantly arrange, you may feel tired at times. Um, so you do need to identify some triggers that early on indicate that you um, need to rest. And this is going to help you avoid burnout. So I'll give you a random example. When I'm in the shower, um, I usually take a squeegee and, you know, squeegee the shower, the glass so that it stays nice and clean. If I'm too tired to squeegee the glass in the shower, I know I'm really tired. <laughs> I know I need to rest. So that's an indicator. Um, did anybody else, does anybody else have any indicators that tell you you're just, you're just really tired and you need to rest? Not as you can think of today. When I fall asleep while reading. Oh I mean, my gosh. <laughs> well, you fall asleep when you're executing. Yeah, it's, I'm actually holding <laughs> something, reading it, and I fall asleep. Okay, well, this is like, you know, try to find another indicator <laughs> before you get to that point. That's hilarious. Um, I'm just generally impatient. If I start getting really impatient with things, I know that that's probably I'm tired and, and uh, need to take a few moments to myself before I upset everybody around me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really smart, right? That minute that you feel that irritability or that impatience you go, you know what? It's really probably not these people or this situation or whatever else. I just, it's probably me just being tired. Thanks for joining, Brad. I wanted to be quiet for a while since I was a little late. So uh, popped yeah. in on us. That's all good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I got this advice from from Rosie, who helped me put these slides together. She said, you know, I have to ensure that I take time to arrange the things that bring me joy. This re-energizes me. And, you know, you can really get into the rearranging the things that need to be arranged and and organized, uh, but not doing enough of the things that you really enjoy and love.
Because your plate gets so full, you wanna take time to identify the top three priorities of the day, making sure that you hit on those three um, and making those priorities so that you don't get stretched too thin and doing a bunch of other stuff that you don't actually achieve, you know, the top three of the day. Now, sometimes you guys spend time creating systems that you never use, and this feels so wasteful to you, and you hate that. But look for what you learned during that process. It taught you something, and it also probably taught you what decision you need to make next. So look at it as organizational stages rather than a waste. And then don't use a system just because you created it, obviously, if it's not working, right? You, you recreated it to this point, go ahead and recreate it some more and get a better system so that it actually is useful to yourself and to others. And if you have a job that doesn't allow you to arrange and organize during that job, you're gonna feel like you have to do that outside the hours, which is gonna create a very long day for you. Um, so I would definitely recommend getting a job that does allow you to do the organization within the constraints of the rule. You don't always need to create a system from scratch. Uh, you're gonna want to, you're gonna wipe it out and just try again, but there's a, you can really actually become more efficient if you start with something that's already there and um, build on that. That's not always the right thing. Like sometimes you do need to wipe it and create a new system, but there's sometimes that you need to use what's available. From a scheduling standpoint, when you guys schedule too tight, too close together, it's actually inefficient because you are gonna have changes that come up, last minute things that come up, and you need to create a space for that spontaneity to be efficient. If you're wanting to really improve, you know, the course of your days, log your days, you know, find a way to do it digitally or to do it by hand that you just say, look, this is what I did, 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 and then look back and say, this worked, this didn't work, this worked, this, this didn't work. So you can, you know, try it again the, the following week a different way. Always look for things that can be dropped so that you're always staying on the higher priority items. You know, there's some things that are gonna be lingering there. Do they really need to be done or can someone else do them? Um, or, or do they need to stay in the pipeline? From a discussion standpoint with other people, um, you know, you always want to prioritize the people that you're having the discussion with in that moment, if you can, because um, they, a lot of other people are going to need your focused attention. And in order to build a good relationship, you got to give them that focused attention, at least for a portion of the time. So you got to really balance how do you not get distracted by all the other things that are going on in the back of your mind uh, while, you know, maintaining this, this good conversation to build a relationship with somebody. Obviously, a ranger is not a relationship building function. It's an execution function. So we do have to pay pretty good attention to how we um, build relationships. We've got to be strategic about it when we have this arranger function going on in the back of our mind all the time. And the load you carry might make others nervous. So to increase their confidence in your abilities to handle so much, just openly share your progress, share your what if thinking, you know, share what's going on and how your approach is actually, you know, beneficial to yourself and to them. Uh, if you just explain your process, they'll, they'll get on board. Okay, so if you wanna well, work well with others, here's some, some tips, you know, observe what other people are good at and trade tasks with them. Get yourself doing the stuff that you're great at you know, offer to take on those tasks and then ask them to do the things that you're not necessarily as good at. That kind of gets that collaborative engagement going, learning about their goals and helping them obtain them. You're gonna have to give people a little time to catch up to the changes that you wanna make. Uh, some people just need a lot more time and you're going to have to balance, you know, when you're changing things and when you're creating stability, when you're working with others, because you can just change, 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 but others need a sense of stability. Always explain why the new way, the new method, the new technique is more effective so people understand what, you know, the intent is behind what you're doing. If people are getting really overwhelmed, offer to take on the stuff, you know, it's really hard to overwhelm you. You can always build a relationship with others and build collaboration by helping. Obviously, you wanna take on some organization initiatives for a team that you're on. 
And if you do see new, you know, new ways or new systems or uh, ways to be, you know, optimize productivity or talent, uh, you, you always want to at least share those and recommend those wherever possible. If you can get into a role where you're creating new systems, that's even better. If you have the opportunity to plan events for um, the people that you're working with, that's awesome. They will really appreciate that. And then I put on here to, you know, volunteer for the demanding projects. You guys are built for them. So you might as well put yourself in the environment that's going to allow you to be most successful. So for us to partner with you guys, we need to use your efficient processes and optimizations. Um, we need to provide you with variety so that you can stay engaged and interested. We need to give you the freedom to organize, arrange, and align and do that, you know, repeatedly. Um, if I'm getting really overwhelmed with stuff, you're the partner I go to to say, hey, can you help me with, with you know, A, B, or C because I'm overwhelmed and I need, I need someone to take a little bit of the load. You guys gladly do that. We can discuss ways that make us more productive together. We could, um, you know, as a partner, I could provide you feedback of what I also think could improve the process, make it more efficient or optimize it. You're gonna to wanna to hear those suggestions. We could discuss methodologies, frameworks, techniques, and resources to do the same. And we wanna talk about each other's strengths and how we can you know, both have the greatest impact to the operation. Also a good partner for an arranger is someone who can kind of reel them back in. You know, If, if they're getting too wild out there, just say, hey, uh, these things probably are least important. These are probably the most important. Let's, you know, let's focus on making sure we get these done even though we're touching on these other things as well. And of course, we do need to be cognizant of when you do get overloaded. So we're not asking too much as a partner. And of course, attending the events that you guys have organized or orchestrated would be, you know, again, that's using something that you built and that's a, a huge compliment to you. I listed out some of the Gallup Clifton Strengths partnerships for the arrangers on the team. So you can go through these, you know, when you need help with certain things like prioritizing or removing distractions, or if you want, you know, to bounce ideas around processes off of certain people, you know, all those types of things are listed here. And here, you guys got two pages. <laughs> And, um, you know, to have a successful relationship, some of the things you can bring to that relationship or to take charge of the organizational aspects of the relationship, like scheduling events and, you know, date nights and things to go do. Uh, also, if you're in a, a marriage or, you know, you live with somebody, you can take on things like, you know, doing the grocery, the groceries and the laundry and, you know, organizing the closets and just, you know, the logistical stuff, you know, taking children where they need to go, you, you know, those things that you really enjoy doing. Uh, know that you're not neglecting the other person if you're not organizing their stuff. <laughs> uh, it may feel like it, but, you know, everybody likes to do things their way and have their own drawer and organize things their own way. So you don't, you know, you don't need to feel like you need to get up in there and organize it unless they've asked you to. Um, especially when you're going to have a hard community, you know, uh, discussion with somebody about the relationship, make sure that you write all your thoughts down and then prioritize those and then really figure out what, what's the most important thing to discuss. Cause usually when you're having those kind of conversations, you can really only cover one, two, or three at the max in one conversation. So you really need to pick the most important things and just focus on those so that you actually make progress and have improvements on those three areas. And if there's anything that your partner can take off your plate, um, please let them know because what happens is we see that you guys do all this stuff and so we just pile it on. We don't know what you actually you know, need us to do sometimes. And you, you know, if you can communicate that and say, look, I'll do all these other things, but I just need you to do this, this, and this, then it, then it helps us be better partners to you. And then of course, you, you're so good at if something's not working, just try something else. And, um, you know, make a suggestion or recommendation, just be open and willing to try something different. 
if you're a leader with a ranger, you know, obviously you want to arrange the talent so that people get to do what they do best every single day, and that will help them be engaged and productive. Um, you want to focus on not recreating the real, but again, leveraging the current systems where possible. And then if, if you need to overhaul the systems that are not working. Now, you don't want to do that over and over and over again, because again, people need stability and they need to know what they can count on in a workplace. And if you see something about your leadership that's not working, you can go ahead and quickly pivot and try to try something else. If you want to be accountable to the team, you can even tell them what you're doing and what you're trying so they can give you feedback. You have the ability to provide a very safe environment to the team for experimentation, trial and error because they get to come in and try different things. And if it's not working, they can just try something else and they don't have to be afraid of failing in the environment that you provide. Definitely uh, one thing to be very cognizant of is to not impose your style of arranging, rearranging, arranging, rearranging onto others because Again, only 13% of the population has that as a top five strength. So most people don't function this way. And you don't want to act like they should or try to get them doing it your way. It's not gonna work for them unless they're an arranger. And then, you know, to be strategic, you wanna lead operational teams, lead, um, you know, supply chain teams or logistic teams or talent teams. And then of course, arranging events for the team to all come together is wonderful. It's a wonderful use of your strength. As a coach, um, I like to help arrangers from not burning out. So I'm always recommending guidelines and boundaries and structures they can put in place that actually help themselves. Um, I know that they're gonna be flexible within those boundaries and structures and they might replace them all together, but at least now they're thinking about what is needed in order for them to maybe, for example, have balance. Um, it's best if I, as a coach to an arranger, get involved in their day-to-day -day so I can just see how they're doing things. It also just, it engages them because that's what's most important to them is, is their day-to-day -day arrangement. So if I'm, if I'm involved, if I get to see what they're doing and I get to be a part of it, we kind of bond and then I also know how to help them best. Um, I do, there's a spelling error on this coach, on, on this slide. I, I put help arrangeries find ways to document their days and systems so they can see what works and what does not work. We've talked about that. Um, I can also act as a handbrake for them if they need it, um, or, or help them prioritize. And I can offer, su you know, suggestions around potential systems or methodologies or, you know, other resources for them to try out. Um, again, I can help them identify those thresholds for their, for their triggers that say, okay, it's time to rest and recover or go on vacation. Um, and I, I know that you guys do keep the systems intact. And, you know, once you find a system that actually works really well, then, you know, you'll, you'll keep it, you'll keep it around and maybe make minor adjustments to it, but it'll be a point of stability. So I think it's always important for us as coaches to really try to help you find that optimized state. And then making sure that you guys do fun things on top of all the work that you do. And then here's a list of actions for the arranger to ensure that they are staying within their arranger talent every single day. Um, to be most effective and to be most engaged in their work. And, and ensure that they're using their strengths and talents every single day. What other thoughts have you guys had as we have talked through this arranger today? Any questions, anything you'd like to share? I've got one question. How do you tell the difference between, because you, you spent a lot of talking about how they put a lot on their plate. They're trying to get stuff done. They're trying to do a lot. How, what are the, can you tell uh, certain things that would differentiate a ranger from like an achiever since they're the same type of, they're trying to get a lot done all the time. Like what would be the big differences where you go, wait a minute, that's not an arranger, that's an achiever. Well, so you kind of look at what they are getting done. Because 
let's say I have an achiever of strategy and an achiever of communication and an achiever of command, an achiever of um, futuristic. They're going to be achieving towards those things, not towards efficiencies and optimization and arrangements and organization. A uh, ranger is very operationally focused. They're very tactical. They have the what if thinking, but they move very, very fast. And they make a lot of decisions and a lot of changes extremely fast. So you're going to see a lot of change where like, if you look at my achiever, Brad, it's I'm achieving learning. I'm achieving discipline. I'm achieving consistency. I'm achieving relationships. I'm achieving intellect. I'm achieving deliberativeness. Now it's going to be a little confusing because I'm organized as well. But like, for example, um, if I come over to my system that I've created, let's go to it so you guys can see it here. It is a system that is set in stone, right? It's not moving. It's improving all the time, but it's a system. And I stay focused on this 24-7 and I create this really big long-term thing. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not needing to juggle 25 zillion things. I literally can just put all my time and effort into one big thing, one purposeful thing. So that's kind of how you're going to go. Okay. And, and what's really hard, Brad, to your point is that, you know, it's, are they focused on a zillion different things? Are they focused on one thing? Do they have both achiever and arranger? Do they have responsibility and arranger? Do they have responsibility achiever arranger? <laughs> You know, what, what's the combination um, that either makes them a ranger or doesn't? But really, I, I, to be honest with you, when I, and this is from my perspective, because I'm very goal oriented as far as, you know, I stay on task and streamlined. When I see somebody's life who looks a bit chaotic to me, I'm like, wow, you got a lot going on. That's overwhelming to me. That's when I know they're very highly likely in a ranger without, you know, having them take the assessment. Gotcha. What, what else? This, by the way, is my friend Rosie who helped me with these slides. She had a ranger number three. Julie, any, any, you know, further thoughts from you that you think would be a good addition to this conversation or any revelations? Um, not so many revelations, just as, as you're mentioning things, I'm like, yep, yep, here's what I did that, here's when I did that. I have a very simple one I can share is, because I'm always looking for a better way process improvement. I have the option of two different on-ramps to get onto a highway. And I figured out that the first one you have to get on fast. The second one, you've got four or five miles until you have to move. So I take that second one because it's not as stressed. And I've now convinced my husband, he can do that as well. So it was just looking at a better way to take out that piece of stress of merging onto the highway and giving myself more room. Yeah. So it's not always about time. As and another story, I was a corporate trainer um, years ago. Right. Just and taking the stress off. And when I was a corporate trainer for the Williams companies hundred years ago, I got dispatched to Guymon, Oklahoma, and I'm in Tulsa. And for those of you that know, don't know this part of the country, when you're driving to Guymon, if you look to your left, you'll see a tree about 60 miles away. There's nothing out there. They're known for slaughtering 10,000 head hog a day. Uh, but Williams had a plan out there and I drove it the first time and it's a four hour drive. And it was interesting the first time. It was driving me crazy coming back though. I'm like, okay, this, yeah, I, don't, I don't need to see this. But my biggest challenge was I had so many other things on my plate. I could do nothing else when I was driving. And so I switched to flying when I had to go out there. And even though that also took four hours, it was, um, I could be reading on the plane. I had stuff because I was always, I was a curriculum developer as well. So I always had so many things going on. So just the fact I didn't have to sit there and do this, yeah. I didn't care that they criticized me for flying, but it was like, I just know I got other st stuff I need to get done and I cannot sit behind a wheel for four hours with all those things uh, waiting for me. Right. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Let's see here. Susan, any questions or thoughts? Uh, no, but I think I had identified.
provide one or two for Rangers. <clears throat> Um, do you have a ranger anywhere near your top 10? 12. It's number 12. Okay. But like Julie, what you were just explaining and with your freeway example, I do the same thing. Like I'm from New York and to get a seat on a train, I would take the train in the opposite direction because I knew the end of the line was one or two stops, the opposite. way so i take it to the end of the line knowing everybody gets off and i had my pick of a seat so i don't care that it took a little maybe one train difference but it was worth it for a seat you know in rush hour when they're packed i do that kind of stuff all the time people thought i was nuts until they tried it <laughs> um okay so you know as per usual you know, if anybody you know wants to take the assessment over Christmas, there's lots of different ones you can take. You can take the full 34, you can get the upgrade, you can do the top five. I do them in different languages. And you've got an app out there that you can use. Um, you know, you can log in with your credentials to get tips every single day. You can use my site if you want to, strengthologyinsights.com to get all those additional insights. And uh, you can use the YouTube channel called To Coach. Or, or get a book, um, you know, or get someone else a book for Christmas to help them learn about the strengths. Uh, everything, by the way, that I do in my um, business, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, 10% uh, is donated to OUR, Operation Underground Railroad, to support that wonderful organization who helps children who have been human trafficked. And then of course, you know, you can share my information with, with anybody. And uh, this video will be posted on the YouTube channel and I will post the slides out on to LinkedIn. And then next week I plan to do communication. Yay. Uh, I just, I don't know why, but I've really been into that strength lately. So I would like to put some slides together on it for you guys. Anything else that I can do for you? Any other questions, thoughts? No, this was interesting. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Always interesting. Great. Great. Yeah. If you need, if you ever want anything that I don't have any here, just ask and I'll add it in. Okay. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good rest of the week. You too. Thank you.